Folks, in this video today, I am talking to Tampa Bay Buccaneers and former USF defensive lineman Deidrin Sennett. Deidrin, how you doing today, man? Doing good, doing good. Uh, got done with uh, OTAs today. Uh, just got home maybe like an hour ago. Okay, awesome. Not bad, man. I mean, I know that you've been keeping a pretty busy schedule, so I already thanked you once. I'll thank you again for taking time to talk with me. I know, obviously, this is a very busy time for you. You're going into your second season with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but we have a lot to talk about, man. And the first thing that I want to talk about is this. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you're actually from Florida, born and raised here. You went to the University of South Florida, Tampa campus specifically, my man. So you're playing for your hometown team. What does that mean to you to be playing for a team that you've literally been around, you know, most of your young adult life here? Uh, it means everything. First and foremost, you know, I'm still blessed to be able to play the game. But, uh, you know, just having my family close and near to come to support me at, at home games and just being able to go spend holidays with them and just have an off season time to be here with them and spend more time with them. So for me, it means everything. I love it. You know, I cherish every moment. And I'm big on family, so um, just, you know what I mean, having that opportunity instead of being in Atlanta or being anywhere else, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm happy I got the opportunity to be here. And you did just mention your family. Like, how big of an impact have they been in your football career to motivate you, to kind of push you to be the guy you are today in terms of, you know, your character and also just who you are as a, a football player in general? How have they been motivators for you? Oh, man. Well, you know, me, my sister, my brother have been everything for me. You know, my parents passed at a young age, so uh, they all have had, they all have had. And, uh, you know, we had some dark days and, you know, what I mean, but, you know, just having them there and just just, you know, what I mean, me, you know, what I mean, living out my dream and just having them by, beside me, supporting me and just, you know, what I mean, just actually being able to have me and my brother, me, me my brother, and my sister in the same room means everything for me. Uh, my grandma stays in Ruskin. So it just, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's truly a blessing just to have them, you know what I mean, so close, but actually I also get to see them, you know what I mean? So, you know, I try to go stop by and see my grandma at least once a week, see my, see my, see my uncles and aunties and spend time with my sister and, and her, you know, my nieces and stuff. So it means everything. So, yeah, to be able to see literally all of your family, like, I know you had played obviously with the Atlanta Falcons, you were drafted there. We'll get to that in a little bit, but like, being in a situation now where you've spent obviously last season with the Bucks, this season you're with them too, and everybody's just a short drive away. Like that's got to be almost like a dream scenario for you then, right? It, it is. It is. It's like a dream come true. It's a dream come true. That's awesome, man. No, I, and I think that that's such an, that's awesome to see that that family is such a huge motivator for you in terms of, you know, who you are as a person and who you are as a player, I guess, I guess more so specifically too, like, what things have your family members instilled in you in terms of leadership qualities, character qualities, and just kind of who mold, you know, how have they molded you to be that guy you've been? Uh, you know, well, you know, my sister, she's like a mother figure for me. She took care of me once my parents passed, you know, my brother, you know, he was in out of prison, but uh, just, you know, I me mean, just, I, I'm, I'm really the, the, the guy who brings everybody together. So I try to just, you know what I mean? Keep that in mind every time, I'm out here and grinding, you know what I mean, and working hard. I just like, hey, this weekend, let's go do something together. Let's go sit, you know what I mean, at my grandma's house and get everybody, you know what I mean, anybody and everybody that's related to let's get them together. So uh, I just try to keep everybody together and just keep us, you know what I mean, prayed up and just, you know what I mean, let, let them know, you know what I mean, I'd rather be here than anywhere else, you know. So, I mean, just, I guess, you know, it, I guess I just, you know, round everybody up. I guess that's my job. No, and I, and I think that that's, that's an awesome thing to see, right? Because, like, you take the initiative to say, hey, obviously we're all here. You know, let's all be together and, and as a family unit. And I think that's an awesome just thing to see in you as a character and, and, and as a human being. I think that that's an awesome thing that you don't always see. You know, so yeah. I, I think that's great, man. Um, But speaking of the Bucks, you know, you did just talk about it. You did sign with them in April of 2022. And... You weren't that far away. You were in Atlanta, division rival. I know that's probably an interesting situation going from the Falcons to now a division rival. That's interesting in itself. But, like, how did joining the Bucks come about and kind of describe that type of situation? Uh, well, I got injured with the Atlanta Falcons in my fourth year in the league. So uh, once I got cleared of injury, injury uh, my agent called me and was like, hey, 
uh, the day I got cleared, hey, we got a, a team want you, the Bucks want you. So I went out there and worked out, and I signed the next day. And, you know, I had a couple more teams who wanted to work me out just to see if my shoulder was back 100%. But uh, my agent was like, hey, man, you got a great opportunity. They just won a Super Bowl a year ago, a, a year ago, and, you know, you can get back on the get, – get your name back on the market, you know, and you can play. I like, hey, man, I just want to play ball again. So – and he never steered me wrong yet. So I went out there and just, you know, I worked out for him. And the next day I signed. So, it's, you know, that's all that's all, that's all. all that really happened. Yeah, and I do want to talk about that opportunity here in a little bit. But, you know, how, I just want to ask you too, like, how's your experience been with the team so far? You've been working with Coach Bowles. You obviously were there in his first year as the head coach. Now he's going into his second year. How has that experience been with the team so far? I know you obviously grew up around them, but how's it been with the Bucks? How's it been with Coach Bowles so far? Oh, it's been amazing. It's been really, it's been really, really, really amazing. Uh, it's my second year in the defense. I'm learning it more, understanding it more, just knowing things I can do. Um, just you know, Coach Bowles has just been a great guy. You know, he's a defensive minded guy, but. He just puts you in positions to be great. You know what I mean? Like he lets his defense defense eat. You know, and we're always doing stuff. We're always moving. We're always trying to create these one on one matchups. And, you know, knowing that I'm not a starter, just when I do get my chance to get in the field, it's like everybody gets a chance to make plays and eat. So I just love that part about it. You know, I'm not just sitting there two gapping things all the time, but uh it's just a blessing just to, you know, be out there able to make plays and just still playing football again. So that right there, I mean, is everything to me. But uh, he's been he's been really, really good. Like, I learned so much from him just being with him one year. I'm excited to see what this year holds. Yeah, and, like, obviously, too, you, you have Casey Rogers there. He was the defensive line cool. coach. He was, event, you know, obviously co-defense coordinator now with Larry Foote. How has, how has it been working with those guys also? Uh, uh, Casey just been been a great guy, man. He's just been teaching me things that I never really saw. Uh, he takes the time to break it down and just, like, lets you learn what – everybody around you is doing i was so used to just knowing what i'm doing now just our defense aligned we can all you know i'm not saying we can all can go play every position but we know what each other are doing so it makes us move fluently you know what i mean and just knowing when you got to drop knowing when you got to stunt you know knowing when your brothers come behind you things you can do you know what i mean to make plays and help the defense out so just from that standpoint i didn't really i didn't really grasp the game that way, you know, knowing when your safeties are down in the box, knowing when it's light and heavy, those type of things, just, you know what I mean? Just he's opening my eyes to different things, but it's also just helping me play better. Um, like he's been, he's been a really, really, really good, you know, coach for me, mentor for me. So I just, I mean, I'm, I'm just really, truly happy and blessed to just have him, you know what I mean? As a coach and just, you know what I mean? Just, just, just enjoying it and just soaking all the knowledge I can from him. So it's been really good. It's been really good. Since the day I got here, he's been challenging me, knowing these knowing form, formations, knowing what the offense is giving us, knowing what they want to do against three four, three, four defenses, and just knowing what we – like knowing your, your most, what you most likely to get. So with those things being said, just like you can tell from that point, we need to test the field yet, you know, and just – I'm just telling you what he's teaching me mentally. And then we get on the field and just he shows you examples and do drills and just – everything makes sense and it clicks. So it's like, it's really a good, true blessing to have a coach like him, you know what I mean, just teaching me these things, you know what I mean? Because before I was just so focused on what I had to do. Now I'm focused on, you know what I mean, what my brothers are doing and what I can do to help the defense and what I can't do. And you know what I mean, where I need to be and how can I, you know what I mean, make a play out of this. So it's been really good. It's been really good for me. Well, that's, well, first off, that's awesome because it definitely sounds like you're you're almost in the midst of like, I don't want to say like like a like a, almost like a uh, like a breakthrough type of scenario. You know what I mean? To where yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the, the coaching is there. The exotic defense is there. I mean, you talked about it. Versatility is so just amazingly present there in this defense, right? Like you have so many different guys doing so many different types of things. It's been a, a blast to watch now. I do want to talk about this is in your time in Atlanta. I know you talked about, you know, two gapping and how you had to do that a lot in the past and the differences now with this defense, you know, you had played for Dan Quinn before. He's also a defensive minded head coach. And now you're playing for Todd Bowles. How have their schemes and their coaching styles differed from one another? And how have you adapted to each of them? Well, I will say, you know, first of all, Dan Quinn was an amazing coach. He drafted me. Uh, I love this guy. He was a great dude, you know what I mean, when I was around him, when I was with him. Just when I was with 
the Falcons, I was I feel like I wouldn't say it was it wasn't anything to do with Dan Quinn. When I was with the Falcons, I was just thinking about me. Yeah. You know, and and I was just trying to, you know what I mean, be the best nose tackle there. Right. And I didn't learn any other position and I just was taking what I learned from college to the NFL and just trying to be ready, you know, to pick up the slack. Because, you know, once I got there, I guess Don, Don Terry Poe had left. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we needed a nose. And so I was just trying to you know, just go and learn the defense at, at a fly. Uh, when I came here with Todd Bowles, it was just, you know, I know I can stop the run. You know, I know I can play ball. You know what I mean? Now what can I do to help the team? You know, so it was just a different mindset opposed to just being with Dan Quinn. Now, Dan Quinn taught me a lot of things. He taught me just what what to expect out of four a four three defense. You know, he taught me to just like how to play my keys and how to be stout in the run, how to how to, you know what I mean, to see see the game from my position. You know, and uh, you know, with Casey, you know, each year I had a different D line coach while I was with the Falcons, you know. Mm-hmm. So with Casey just being a second year with him. You know, during OTAs, he takes the time to let you know. He like he asks you question like, "Is you light in the box? Or is you heavy in the box? Do we have help? You know, on double double, do we have you know? Do we have QB? Do we have our do our corners have man eyes or they have cover eyes? Just like when you know those type of things, you know you got to put a game on. You I mean you know those type of things? You know we can't have an open hole so the QB can leak out, and that's a, like a sixty yard run. So when you just look at it from that point of view, now I'm not looking at it from just what I'm doing. I'm looking at it from what we can't do, you know? And yeah. now, you know, you got to run games. You got to do certain things. So just knowing that makes you play better, but also helps you put – it puts the defense in a better predicament to make plays, you know? And it's not about just what I'm doing. And that's the, I think the biggest thing was for me was just learning the game and learning learning what I can do, learning formations, learning, learning what the defense the guy's doing, learning what my DN is doing. You know, just learning those type of things were the best thing for me. So I just feel like it was just more growth for me being a football player, just spending time in the league and just taking a full year to learn the game and just each year trying to improve on things. So I think, you know, that was just a growth step on me. But I feel like, you know, those are two really great coaches. And, you know, I learned I learned great things from both of them. Yeah. And would you say that? All those things that you've been learning and experiencing now coming into this next year, obviously continuity with Casey Rogers is huge, right? You, you, We've already spoken about that. That's the first big thing. But also it comes with just experience in the league, right? Just in general. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, just experience. Just over time, just playing the game and being in it, you know, and just it, it means they were like, you know, this was my first time making it to the playoff game, you know, this year. So it was just those type of things, you know, I mean, we're good. You know, this is the first time, you know, I was having a winning season, you know, we had chances to rush the passer, you know, just, you know, you had those type of opportunities just, or you had those type of things to see and just be a, be a part of it. So those things were bit really, really huge for me. Yeah. And, and obviously right now you're a rotational guy here in this situation in Tampa Bay. So whenever you, I know you did talk about it. You, you, we know that you can stop the run, right? What other strengths do you feel that you have as a player and how do you see yourself contributing to the team moving forward now? Some of those pieces are gone. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what other ways do you feel like you can contribute to that whole team mentality like what we've been talking about already? Um, I just feel like, you know, I can just, you know, contribute with my effort. You know, I know I can stop the run and just I know, you know, if I'm around the ball, I'm just trying to make a play, you know, I mean, for for the guys, you know, I'm just I'm laying it all on the line. Every time I take a chance to touch the field, I give it up to the Lord and I'm blessed and happy to be there. But. I mean, any way and every way possible, you know, I'm learning, I'm, I'm trying to become a better pass rusher, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to become, you know what I mean, great at seeing things, great at executing, just, I'm just trying to be the best version of me to help the team. So whatever, wherever I'm needed, you know, is, is where I want, I, I'm willing and ready to do, but uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to overall improve from last year and just, just be a better version of me. Yeah, no, and I, I agree 100%. I think one thing that I think contributed a lot, and I'm sure obviously you'd agree with this, is that you were much healthier last season than you have been in the past couple of years, where I know that, that can be such a, you know, demoralizing thing, right? Dealing with all the, dealing with some of the injuries that you have and, you know, not being able to go out there and play, right? So, you know, this past season, you know, you were able to play in a ton of games, really get a lot of reps in there. What do you attribute that to, and how did it feel to play that much last season? in terms of, you know, missing those past couple of years due to injuries? Uh, I mean, 
Well, I only had one year of injury. I've missed, you know, I mean, one whole year when I had shoulder surgery. Mm -hmm. But all the other times, you know, I didn't, you know, I wasn't playing. It, it wasn't my call. I was ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just wasn't dressing up. I wasn't suiting that game. And that was a call from, you know, upstairs. But uh, with all that being said, like, I mean, I always been, I always pride myself on being ready at all times and just being a healthy scratch. So uh, just when I had got an injury, it really just made me reset and just, you know, just look back at, you know what I mean? I got to prepare every day like it's game day. And uh, with that being said, uh, it feels good to be healthy and ready and just, you know what I mean, willing and ready to contribute to anything and everything. So, I mean, I just – I feel like, you know, um, the sky's the limit when it comes to that aspect. Yeah, and, and I would even say then to that point of, you know, not so much being injuries but maybe, you know, not getting as much playing time this year – you know, you were able to get some more snaps under your belt, be a part of some situations. And, you know, hey, I, I will say this, you know, one of the reasons I was excited about this interview was that you, you went out there and made some plays, man, in a, in a handful of situations. You were able to stop the run in a, some good situations. You got your fir first career sack last year. I think that you had some success both as a pass rusher and as a run stopper as well. What do you attribute to that success that you did see in those opportunities that you did get last year? Um. I would just say, you know, just staying ready. You know, whenever my number's called, I'm willing, I'm ready to get in and just, you know what I mean, make something happen. You know, just – just I look back from when I was playing college ball. I always made plays. I always was around the ball. I always had high energy, high effort. So, I just – you know what I mean, I keep that going. I, I mean, you know, most guys, you know, after the play, just chill. You know what I mean? Just me. If I'm on the play, I don't know how many plays I'm going to get. Just, you know, when I do get them, I'm, I'm going to give everything I got. So I just, you know, I, I contribute that to just always working. Just, you know, I mean, continue to work that, you know, your time is coming. And, you know, I got opportunity. I just wanted to make the best of it. Yeah, and, you know, I think now the Bucks are in a pretty interesting situation where you can find yourself in an increased opportunity here. You re-signed with the team. You know, some guys have departed in the offseason. Akeem Hicks isn't here anymore. Will Goldston, Rakeem Nunez Rochez. What does it mean to you to possibly get that, you know, opportunity here to step up with some of those guys moving on to other places and for you to potentially get an expanded role here in this defensive line. It means everything. Like I, I always, I just, I told you it means everything to me. Just playing football means everything to me. Uh, I do see myself, you know, trying to be a starter one day. I'm just working and just, you know, got to keep my head down and just keep tugging, tugging away. But uh, with all that being said, like, I, I mean, no matter what, whether these guys are here, those guys you mentioned are great guys, and I'm really close with all of them. I hate that we ain't all together anymore, but uh, yeah. like I said, I mean, those guys push me, you know what I mean? Just seeing those guys being successful, and you know what I mean? Just I just want to be successful too, and I, I, I see the work that those guys put in, and I try to match it or even go, you know, put even more work in, but uh, it, just, it, just, it, it, it just keeps me optimistic just to, you know, see what this season holds for me. And uh, just, you know what I mean, get an opportunity to go out there and do something. And just, you know what I mean, seeing that the coaches have faith in me to, you know what I mean, continue to play ball. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I do want to say this too, like kind of looking again back at that whole team perspective, right, of just looking at the bigger picture here. You know, the Bucks have had a lot of change this offseason. Obviously, Tom Brady's not here anymore. There's a couple new quarterbacks battling it out right now with Baker and Kyle Trask. You know, there's, there's some challenges there that this team is going to face this season. How do you personally plan to kind of battle some of those challenges or overcome them, I guess I should say, and how do you feel like the Bucks are going to plan to overcome some of these challenges as well as a, a whole team together? Yeah, well, personally, how I feel like, you know what I mean, I'm going to overcome these battles is just, you know what I mean, it's just work. The work is, you know, once you put the work in, you know what I mean, the outcome is what the outcome is going to be. You know, whether we win, lose, or draw, we still got to go back and put the work in. So, once you know, once we do that, that that factor, you know, what I mean, that's that that just lays out the the platform for everything. But um, I feel like we're gonna have a great year. I feel like you know we're gonna come together as a team. We're getting closer right now during OTAs. We got a lot of guys here, and just you know, I feel like you know we're gonna be successful because we're putting the work in right now. Yeah, and that's and, uh, no, no, go ahead. No, no, you get, you get. Well, I was gonna say, um, obviously you've been out with OTAs so far up to this point, um. Obviously, you know, I'm sure it's a great feeling and the turnout's been amazing, right? Like so many guys have been hungry and ready to go. Like, what does that mean to you personally to see that type of turnout? Well, it means everything. Just, you know what I mean? Getting the connection with the guys and just, you know what I mean? Creating good practice habits, you know, just, you know what I mean? Learning football, like we're really literally just learning the game and just we're getting put in situations 
that we were going to see in the season and just preparing mentally. And, you know, I mean, right now, so not, not physical at all, but, you know, just preparing mentally for it and just get, taking those steps to be great, you know. And um, I feel like, you know, it's going to all plan out for us because, you know, we all doing it now. And, you know what I mean? Like just I've been in part of OTAs where, you know what I mean, a lot of guys don't really show up. You know, a lot of guys are doing other things, training. But, you know, with this team, you know, we got a lot of guys there. We got a lot of guys, you know, showing up, a lot of guys participating, a lot of guys getting the, just the extra learning curve and just fixing the mistakes from last year. Uh, I just feel like we, we, we taking big steps and we're doing good things and I'm just happy. You know what I mean? I'm a part of it. You know what I mean? So yeah. we just see, we'll see how it go. That's great, man. And, and, you know, before I talk about your group specifically, all the guys that are part of that, obviously, you know, a big question has been Baker and Kyle. We've been seeing some footage of these guys and there's been a lot of glowing reviews from both of these guys and how they've been approaching the game so far. Um, what has been your impression on both of these guys? I know obviously you were with Kyle last year, but Baker's coming into the team. Um, he obviously played against you last year with the Carolina Panthers. Cool. So, so what has been your impression of both of these guys so far? Oh man, I, I think both of these guys are great, man. It's going to be a tough battle. Um, it's just, it's above my pay grade though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just the, I, I, I love to see the competition. I love it. You know, both of these guys are just competing. They're doing really good. They're doing great things. I don't see no flaw in any one of these guys, you know, but that's above my pay grade. You know, whoever we go with, I'm, you know what I mean? I know we're going to have both of them there and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what, what goes down, you know? So I can't, I can't knock anybody, you know what I mean? I'm just, I really am just focused on trying to be the best version of me and, and that, that right there is going to help contribute to whoever wins the QB battle, yeah, you know, no. but it's, it's, it's been some really good work going on. Yeah, no, and that's, and speaking of really good work, obviously the unit that you're a part of, very talented defensive line. Y'all have got mm -hmm. some really just strong dudes on that line. You got Vita Vey, you got yourself, you got Greg Gaines, you got Logan Hall. What does it mean to be a part of such, I would say, a very strong unit and, talking about pushing yourself to compete with your teammates for playing time and just really pushing each other. You know, it's that old saying, iron sharpens iron. Just kind of what are your thoughts on being a part of this really talented and I think pretty youthful defensive line unit? Yeah, uh, you know, well, we're, we're, we're kind of young on, on this side this year around. But, uh, you know, last year we had some older guys, more experienced guys, a lot of playing time. Uh, just being around those guys, you know, they use their brains more then you know what I mean, then like I would I I would have used, you know what I mean, plan. But uh I feel like we got some good young useful guys, but these guys are moving. These guys are quick. These guys are fast, you know, and these guys are, you know what I mean, they flexible. They these guys are like really, really good and opposed to just being strong. But um I feel like it's gonna be really good. Like it's uh it's truly good, you know what I mean, just to, you know what I mean, have Vita in, in the room and just, you know me, playing with Vita and just seeing how, you know what I mean, how how tall and big he is, but still move. You know what I mean? It, it blows my mind every day when I see him. I'm just like, damn, bro, you really can move. And he's like a good pass rusher, too. And you got Logan Hall. You got Greg Gines. And you got Khalil. You know, we got our rookie who just, you know, got in there. But uh, I feel like we're gonna, we, we, we have something cooking up, and we're going to be really, really ready for the season. Well, another thing, too, um, you know, obviously playing next to Vita Vey is huge. Obviously um, playing next to all those different guys, you know, like Kalijah Kansi is coming in now. He's he's more of an outside edge rusher, kind of like more of a hybrid type role. What's been your impression on obviously the uh, former number one overall pick here or num first round pick here? Oh, man, he's been he's been amazing. I, I love the way he plays. I love I just I love his get off. man. I just I love his I love his, you know, his attitude and just, you know, I mean, he's not just one of those rookies who think they're better than everybody. He's really coming along and he's really, you know what I mean? Just learning and we really connecting. Like, you know, we are trying to just become one. So we all on the same page, but uh, he's really been doing his thing and he's really been impressing everybody. So I can't wait to see what he has in store, you know what I mean? For the season. But uh, we just, we just chugging along one day at a time and just learning the defense. There's a lot of stuff getting thrown at him. You know what I mean? As opposed to all of us, you know, learning the defense all over again, just learning what we can't do and can do. So, with all those things being said, like I feel like he's above the curve. And I feel like he's going to, you know, have a great rookie season. Yeah, and even, you know, with you having a few years in the league under your belt now with, you know, you said a lot of younger guys now in this defensive line group, edge rusher group, do you kind of find yourself taking on a little bit of like a mentor type role and kind of giving some advice to younger players? And if so, what advice do you give those guys whenever they're at, coming to you? Uh, well, I mean, I do from time to time. Like anybody come to me, it don't matter if you're older than me or younger than me. If you have a question, I'm here to help. Yeah. But um, 
I mean, I find myself, you know what I mean, just telling these guys, you know what I mean, just you got to really, really focus in and just watch film, you know what I mean? What you put on film is who you are. And, you know, just focusing on not making the same mistake twice. And just, you know what I mean, just trying to be better than yesterday. You know, creating a routine. You know, when I came in, Grady Jarrett took me on his wing. And, you know, he was just like, hey, you got to find a routine. Find what fits you. Find what gets you going. So whenever you do test the field, you got to put your best foot forward. And I took that with me, you know, to this day. So, like, you know what I mean, I tell anybody and everybody I talk to, all the rookies, you know what I mean, anybody, just find your routine. You know what I mean, you may just be consistent with it, but find it. You know, and uh, that's one thing I tell them. And I just, you know what I mean, just if you need help studying plays, we, we, we watch them together. You know, we look over things because, you know, we can't have no weak link in the chain. And uh, with that being said, it's just like I'm only going to go as far as my three technique goes. I'm only going to go as far as my DN goes, you know. If we're not on the same page, we can't really get nothing done. And just, you know, in order for me to be successful, we all got to be successful. We all got to be on the same page. We all got to be moving. So with that being said, I mean, I, I'm, here to, I'm, here to, I'm here to just help. And, you know what I mean, I feel like it's like I count on them. So if they need help, I got I to gotta help them. Yeah, no, I, I think you put it just perfectly there. You know, just being available, being a guy who can help out wherever he's needed, both as a player and as a person, mentor, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's just making yourself available. And, and I think that that's an awesome thing to see. Uh, Deidre, and I always ask guys at the end of the interviews this. Right now, we're in the middle of OTAs, right? You guys are continuing to put in the work. You're going into your second year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and you're going to have some big opportunities here moving forward. You know, obviously you're going to have another year in the defense under your belt. Um, you had some really great plays last year with, you know, some breakout type of opportunities. And now moving forward, what should Bucks fans expect from Deidre's Senate moving forward this season? Oh man, you should expect the guy to come out and give everything he got <laughs> first and foremost, but you should expect the guy just, you know what I mean? To lay it on the line, you know, just to, you know what I mean? Just when I see the opportunities, I'm going to take them. I'm going to shoot my shot, you know, just even with it being my second year in the team, on the, I mean, on this team, I'm going to give it everything I got for my brothers. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to help us win games. You know, I want to be that, that guy who, who, you know, who contribute to this win and every win that we do get, but you're going to see a guy who just, you know, he's going to have his brothers back and going to be a hundred percent supportive, whether I'm on the field or not on the field. Um, just going to see a guy who's there mentally, physically, and emotionally, and just, you know, I'm going to be in tune with everything from, you know what I mean, the three technique to our base end. Uh, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to do my best to, you know what I mean, help. And I'm going to do my part every day. Yeah, and Deidre, and I couldn't have put it better myself, man. Just getting to, to know you here in this brief moment to learn your story, it's awesome, man. It seems like you're a guy who's there for, for anybody, family members, teammates, you know, older players, younger players, whoever it may be, you're always willing to lend a helping hand. And you're always willing to just, you know, be a part of the bigger picture. And I think that that is such a cool thing to see that you don't always see in players or, or just people in general in life. And I think that that is such an awesome, awesome thing to see, man. But again, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, sitting down here for an interview, man. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Anytime, anytime. I appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. And folks, by the way, let us know what you think about everything that we talked about down in the comment section below. Go check out Deidre's social medias. I will have all of those linked down in the pinned comment down in the comment section below as well. Deidre, do you have anything you want to plug in terms of organizations or, or uh, companies or anything else you got going on in your life right now? No, I don't got nothing else going on right now. I'm just, I'm just focused on football. All right. Well, hey, you know what? That's always the best kind of thing, man. And folks, you know, obviously pay attention to Deidre moving forward to the remainder of, or I guess going into this upcoming season. And uh, go follow him on social media. He deserves it. And folks, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Again, let us know your thoughts. And as always, folks, we'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks. <laughs> all right, go Bucks. <laughs>